Hello everyone, Elite Golden here. Welcome to, uh, well, one of my favorite Axis and Allies titles. Kind of had some time and so I wanted to, to kind of bust this one out and I'll just do a do a solo game for y'all. There, um, it's, uh, well, I mean, hey, this is one of my, like I said, this is one of my favorite games. It's quick enough that you can finish in an evening with a group of friends, but also uh, grandiose enough to, to warrant inviting enough of them over for a, for a fun game night. Um, so this is just regular out of box setup, no house rules this time. Uh, we'll be, although I will be playing with the uh, Russian Revolution, but one thing I would like to note is that um, that that uh, can be rejected. I think the uh, the German player, if I'm uh, not mistaken in the rules, has the privilege to reject um, a Russian armistice if that player so chooses. So um, if, if it's looking like it would be more advantageous for the Central Powers to not take that, then maybe they won't. But either way, I'll be playing with it, so we'll see what happens. I think for some overall strategy here, I'm gonna try not to mess too much around with the Central Powers. I know, well, so I've played a couple of games and my goal sometimes as the Axis Powers, in this case, the Central Powers, is to kind of be a thorn in the Allies' side as much as possible. But that really just quite isn't possible in this game. The Central Powers are at a bit of a disadvantage, um, so it's not necessarily in your best interest to be throwing your pieces kind of wherever they can, rather focus on the task at hand. Um, but then kind of a counter to that, I'm going in with this uh, this expectation for the, the, the Entente that they kind of will try to take in, take take their battles on um, more in like a more in like a theater campaign type thing. They're gonna maybe do some holding actions here and there, but uh, I mean, for example, they'll probably want to start right away uh, going for the Ottomans and going for them pretty pretty hard. We'll kind of see how that works out. Try to surround them, take their money away, and kind of just keep the boot to them and, and not let them expand. Then of course, try to try to take out all of the current holdings in Africa, just to take those IPCs, IPCs off the board and not worry about that theater anymore. Um, so yeah, I think the Central Powers are probably gonna try to go for, um, go for Russia first, take that out, out, of, the, out of the picture. Um, and then move towards France and try to win the game that way. Whereas the Entente are going to try to take the Ottomans, maybe reinforce southern Russia, and keep pushing that way. Unless, of course, an opportunity arises for um, beating the Germans back. Uh, now, I, I, all right, I know you can get in the comments about this, but I have to use the, uh, the Soviet flags for, for the Russian Empire right now just because I haven't gotten any Russian Empire flags printed up just yet. I'm hoping to do that soon, but I've got time right now to do this game, and I don't have, I don't have the resources to make the, uh, the flags at this moment. So it'll be what it is. Hopefully next time I'll have the proper flags. But uh, with that out of the way, I suppose I'll, uh, I'll see you after turn one. We'll see what happens. The, uh, the Central Powers aren't going to be taking too many risks. Um, Try to go in with overwhelming odds if possible. Otherwise, uh, well, otherwise they're going to be going for Russia and then and then turning west. So I'll see you after round one. All right, that is round one in the books, and what a pretty crazy round indeed. So to start off, Austria Hungary, of course, uh, took Serbia, lost two units to do so, but. You gotta make that move anyway, so it wasn't too bad, all things considered. Then they also did a second attack into, um, let's see, I can't quite read what it is, but it's that northern Italian territory, and the Italians held on by one guy denying the Austrians the territory. So they reinforced it, but unfortunately it's probably not gonna be enough. The Austrians have one more big batch of guys coming in, and I, well, I think that probably will be enough to take them out, uh, considering they have a fighter that can back them up. So the Austrians really aren't looking too bad. They'll maybe take out the uh, the Albanians there. 
Uh, maybe the Romanians, we'll see what happens. They've only got so many forces, um, but hey, at least the Ottomans are there to help out. The Russians are looking really healthy. They stacked up in Poland and deterred the Germans from making that attack, so maybe I should have gone in with the Austrians first to kind of loosen it up, but I mean, hey, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. I'm just kind of trying out some strategies. Then the other thing that is really interesting is they did a spoiling attack into Mesopotamia. There's just enough guys in Svestopol to, uh, <laughs> to well, warrant a, uh, a tried attack into Mesopotamia, and it went well enough. So, uh, on the British turn, they reinforced, and, well, the Ottomans, they really didn't have the horses to try to take anything back. And then also on the British turn, they continued building up here in India, took Afghanistan just for an extra dollar. Uh, but yeah, the, <laughs> the Ottomans really aren't looking too good on this round one. Uh, Arabia is, has been activated, Transjordan was lost. Um, yeah, Mesopotamia, Iran is going to fall this turn right here. Um, they're already on the ropes and it's only turn one. Here down in Africa, the, uh, the, the German forces in Southwest, Southwest Africa have already fallen. Uh, the combined might of the Union of South Africa and Rhodesia, the, those three guys in total went in, took them both out for the cost of one, and so... Well, German, Germany had Middle Africa here for a moment, but it's looking like for not much longer than a moment. Um, France tried to just uh, force their luck and try to take back the Gold Coast, lost a guy. Um, but they've got enough, enough forces now to, to likely take that territory next. Um, Portugal has been activated. Pretty standard stuff. Now let's get into the real good stuff. So... Britain lost their boats over here. France had to come back and, and take it for them. Uh, but uh, that's not even the craziest thing. Germany did the, the turn one attack into the, the British fleet in season nine, hit zero mines, and the British got zero hits on them. It was, it was barely two rounds of combat. It was, it was pretty rough for the, for the Brits. Right off the bat, the two subs got a hit, and well, the luck just really wasn't going to go their way. So the Germans have got a reprieve in Western Europe, at least for the moment. They also took Holland with the forces that were in Kiel. I mean, I kind of, I've, I've kind of become a, a little, a, a little bit of a fan of that attack. Um, it's likely that you'll take the territory, and either they're going to move from Kiel to the Ruhr which doesn't yield them any more money, or into Holland, which will net them $2 for however long they can hold it. So I'm kind of liking that. Uh, guys from the Ruhr and Alsace uh, took Belgium. So uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the neutrality of Belgium's already been violated, and uh, they, they did it quite handily. Got quite a few forces in there. The guys from Munich moved into Alsace, and... Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe Germany can win this two-front war pretty lickety-split, but we'll see what happens. Plenty of guys to to kind of take out the French, but the problem is the French are going to be able to put 20 bucks per turn back into the defense of France, whereas Germany really doesn't have much that's going to be able to, to come up on the back lines, at least for a while, because, I mean, well, like I kind of, kind of established on the first turn, the Germans are going to try to go for Russia. Um, and so they really built up forces. I don't think the Russians are going to want to attack at all. Uh, they built up their forces so heavily that if Russia made, attack, made an attack into either territory, they'd actually probably lose. Granted, they wouldn't all lose in the first turn, but they lose way more than, um, than they would uh, hit. So um, it's, it's a really interesting game so far. The Allies are looking really strong in some places, and the Central Powers are looking really strong in other places. So... Um, I'm already liking where this is going, but hey, the balance of power can shift very quickly in this game. That is, that's one of the things I like less about this game, is that if you just have a bad round or two, um, then it can kind of spell the end for you, but I suppose, hey, that's uh, it's more incentive to not not go too crazy. Um, but yeah, having a, that was a fun first turn. I'll, uh, I'm already looking forward to the second one. So I'll catch you then. 
Hey everyone, back with round two, and I mean, things just, uh, they got interesting and they're staying interesting. So, we're in Western Europe. Let's just talk about this. So, Germany swung its armies from Belgium and Alsace into Lorraine against what was pretty much the equivalent of half of France's army, and they took and Germany took pretty much uh, near double what they had there because they were able to combine the two fronts. Um, slammed into Lorraine, took minimal casualties. They, they took way less than average. Um, and so they're looking quite healthy. Then they brought the guys who won the battle in Holland into, uh, into Belgium. And with Britain still not having any transports, France is at this point turtling in Paris. All of those units, barring the ones on the very tip of Bordeaux, uh, they're all in Paris. I would keep one infantry in Picardy and Burgundy just so that it's not a free walk on, but the thing is the Germans are walking that way anyway. It would just be a waste of, of an infantry. Um, so as funny as it is, the the, I was having the Central Powers go for, go for Russia and try to get the revolution or even just take it. As funny as it is, they are currently two tiles away from Paris and it's nearly uncontested. So that's going to be an interesting thing to see play out, especially considering their armies are broke up into two sections right now. Um, and well, it's not even look like they'll, ha it's not even looking like they'll have to combine them. So we will see what happens. Uh, the German fleet is still sitting up there because, well, why would they move? They don't have to. And the British have just put down one transport. Those four guys are currently sitting on French transports right now, um, but you can't hop on foreign transports and hop off the same turn, so they got to sit tight. The Americans just continue building up. They're getting ready for landings. Um, next turn is tanks, but then the turn after that, they'll be in. There is one German in the entirety of Africa, and he's just sitting in Cameroon. They were wiped out in, in, a, in Togoland. They were, they were defeated in Rhodesia and everywhere else, actually. They, they have very few IPCs in Africa now at this point. So um, that theater is coming to a close for them. Over here, things are, uh, well, they're doing something. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to, uh, how to call it quite yet. Um, the British still have their kind of encirclement here where they've got Arabia, Transjordan. Uh, Mesopotamia is now contested. Uh, they took the guys in Ankara and the Syrian desert, slammed them into them. Both sides rolled pretty poorly. So um, obviously the, the Entente rolled a little better um, <laughs> uh, because I think the, uh, the Ottomans lost actually quite a few more. But either way, it's contested and both sides have a sizable force. Um, the British aren't looking too good. Uh, they, they just kind of split up their forces and they're still split and there's only token forces kind of being put back in India right now just because, well, you know the situation over here. Britain's got to start uh, helping out France, otherwise France will fall. And I think France falling is a much bigger deal than, than India falling or, um, or not taking Constantinople within the next few turns or so. So they're kind of playing a little bit of, a little bit of catch up at this point. Um, moving on, the Austrians are doing pretty good. They took Romania very few losses. Uh, they were able to finish off um, northern Italy. Now Italy's kind of trying to trying to defend what they can, but at the same time put up a stiff enough, a stiff enough defense that they won't have Rome sacked. Um, but then down here in Albania, that was that was quite the fun battle. Uh, both sides got one hit, and so <laughs> they're just still staring at each other right now. Um, but Russia is looking, uh, Russia's looking like it's probably going to be over quite soon. Decisive battles are taking place. Maybe they should have retreated out of Poland after seeing what they had. Problem is, where do you go? Because once the Germans are in Poland, they can hit Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, and then in one turn, Moscow. So it's really just a horse apiece. Ukraine isn't looking too good, and especially after the successful Romanian advances, Ukraine is just looking all the worse. I've got a token force in Sevastopol, but well, that's not going to do anything anyway. So they pretty much resigned themselves to building strictly infantry. That's uh, I think 10 infantry in Moscow right now, and they're going to place dang near another 10. So 
we'll see what happens there. Um, I think that's the whole board. We'll see what happens, uh, what happens next. Will the Austrians swing south, or are they swinging towards France to help the Germans? Will the Austrians push through Ukraine? Will the Ottomans have a successful game? Well, these are all questions. Maybe they'll be answered next turn. Maybe it'll take a few more. But regardless, I'll see you in turn three, and hey, maybe there'll be some armor on the board. Later. Well, that's turn three in the books, and things are uh, not exactly developing in favor of the Central Powers. In Western Europe, Germany's kind of realizing that uh, perhaps it has spread a bit too thin. Um, took the territories of Burgundy and Picardy for free, but um, France took them both back uh, with minimal losses as, well, Germany only waltzed in one dude. The Brits have also landed on the continent now that they finally have transports on the side of the board. Germany is still holding tough in their, in their position up there. Gonna, gonna kind of make them fight for, fight for that sea zone if they have to, but, well, with these two British cruisers and the, uh, the French fleet, I think, uh, I think the Germans probably won't last too long on the high seas. Let's see. Armor has been built by three nations, the Germans, the Austrians, and the British. Let's see, it's really interesting over here in Russia. The uh, Russians had a bit of a tactical withdrawal from Poland. The Germans uh, looking very healthy over there. Um, but the Austrians had some very, very bad dice um, and are completely wiped out from the uh, entirety of, of uh, any territory bordering Russia. The closest thing they have is the guys in Vienna. Also, unfortunately for Austria, one guy still remains in Albania. One lone guy. But in slightly better news, Italy is very much not looking good um, and probably will uh, lose. Um, I think that's Tuscany, uh, that territory right there that's still contested. They'll likely lose that, and then it'll just be on to Rome. And, um, it's possible that Italy could fall uh, pretty soon. But Russia probably won't fall very soon, um, at least not for a couple more turns. Um, the Ottomans still are not looking too good. The British are really starting to kind of pump up the numbers. Um, and, well, the Ottomans don't really have, a, have an offensive force, so they just have to play defense. Although it's kind of nice for them. They've only got one front really to worry about. Granted, Transjordan and Arabia are here. They just really aren't that big of a threat. It's, it's really India that they need to worry about. And the Germans are still here in Cameroon, but, well, probably not for much longer. Uh, yeah, so that's that's all of turn three. Um, I might have forgotten to mention this last time, but the Russians came into season 20 and beat the Ottomans um, for, yeah, taking no losses, no mines, and uh, no defensive hits, so good, good on them. Other than that, I think I've gone over everything. Paris might put its uh, put its units to work and have them start marching some direction. Not quite sure yet. Uh, but in any event, turn four is upon us, and that means the Americans can join the fight. So we'll see how much of a how much of an impact these guys can have. But with that, I'll uh, I'll see you in the next turn and. See if these uh, if these armored units make a difference, or or if uh, or, or if the dice have already been cast. All right, see you in the next one. All right, turn four has taken place, and uh, well, the African theater has been wrapped up. The Entente is victorious. There are no more Germans or even Ottomans in Africa at all. So all those IPCs are now going to the war effort. Let's take a look at the rest of the board. Still not looking too good for the Ottomans. They're hoping to play some defense in Mesopotamia. Um, in Arabia, they tried to make an attack. There was only two British, but unfortunately, they only got one hit. So it is what it is. And the British are likely to try to take, uh, try to take a stab at this next turn now that they've got tanks to soak some hits on offense. We'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, other than that, the Ottomans are still not looking too good. Uh, in other news, I was able to get some Russian flags printed up. I thought these looked kind of nice. I know it's not 1914 flags, a 
few decades too late, but uh, I don't know, kind of like them. So I'm going to be using them right now. Uh, to continue looking at Russia, the Germans are really kind of having their way with them. There were some interesting plays made. So the Austrians had had a real tough time against the Russians um, the last couple of turns here. And so what they actually did was smash into Galicia, take it, and the Germans came back and took it uh, for the Austrians. So the Austrians still not looking so good on that side of the board, but the Germans are most definitely here to assist. Uh, Moscow is is kind of, uh, it's looking like it's almost matched in terms of forces for the ones in Ukraine. Um, the Russians came down here to Romania, tried to take the, the Ottoman contingent out of there, missed by one guy. It seems to be kind of a common theme, but just uh, they just end up one, one dice too short, and the Ottomans dealt uh, quite a few hits back, cut, cut through all of their infantry. And, um, well, we'll see. The Germans are doing a lot of heavy lifting over here, but the Austrians are pushing hard into into Italy. There's um, they've they've decided that it's best to hold on to Rome, and maybe try to make their last stand there. So, all of the forces currently in Tuscany are going to have to spend one more turn battling it out in Tuscany, and then try to go for Rome. So. Well, we'll see what happens, but the Italians really are not putting down that many guys per turn anymore. We'll see what happens, though, because the Austrians have been having a bit of difficulty. For the main event, there have been some shuffling around. The Germans, now that they, now they have Belgium, Lorraine, Switzerland, and, well, unfortunately, they have to take up the mantle of defenders of Piedmont so that Austria can continue and try to knock Italy out of the war before they become... Too terribly, uh, too terribly much of a thorn in in their side, but uh, the Germans are kind of having to spread themselves a little bit thin, and all of the Parisians have begun walking forward. Burgundy has a stack of many, many French troops, far outnumbering the Germans, and so it's quite likely that they'll have to start trading space for time and retreat so that they don't suffer the full might of, of the French army and can kind of pull back their supply line so that <laughs> troops can get to the front a little quicker. The German uh, Kriegsmarine has, has retreated that way. They're kind of protected by their own mines. And well, the Entente kind of capitalized on that. They've pushed back up. They can now attack into Belgium, but not exactly a great idea for a naval attack into Belgium just because of how many artillery are sitting right there. Other than that, the Americans have showed up and they took a Spanish colony. Well, I don't know. I guess they're trying to trying to rekindle the Spanish-American War, but I don't think the Spanish are going to do anything about it. So that's the board state right now. Going into turn five, we'll see what happens. The Germans aren't going to quite, uh, quite get there with their armor, but hey, maybe the French need to make some armor. Didn't even think about that. That definitely helped them in their efforts. All right. See you in turn five. Hey everyone, turn five has elapsed and the Americans are on the move. All right, so we'll start off with the American movement. They have slammed into Piedmont, taken the central powers out of there. It was uh, both both uh, a defense of, of Austrians and Germans. Uh, un unearthed them from that place at the cost of one of their own infantry. So. Uh, hey, I think the Entente will take a 5-1 to one trade any day. Still over here in the boot of Italy, uh, Tuscany has now fallen to the Austrians, and they are looking quite powerful, uh, considering, well, there's, there's a couple of dark chips and a lot of artillery right there. Uh, so Italy is just building up its stack in Rome there, but they're not making too much money anymore, just uh, maybe putting down about three guys, four guys per turn. Um, Africa is still the same, of course. Continuing over here, uh, looking really good for the Ottomans. They've finally taken Arabia, maybe are ready to push against Transjordan. And, uh, well, the Brits just can't seem to get there quick enough. The offensive, the constant offensives by the Ottomans are just doing uh, really good. And uh, the tanks weren't able to come fast enough. 
And now there's, well, the Ottomans have thinned out. There's only, I think, seven Ottomans left in Mesopotamia, but there's only one British left, British guy left there. So, well, we'll see what happens there. I think the Americans might have to pick up and head straight on over to, to assist taking them out instead of assist propping up the Italians. The Germans have made some significant headway up against the Russians. Obviously, well, they're in Moscow, as you can see, but they really don't have that much in the way of infantry. They really have to rely on Ukraine and Poland, uh, those armies pushing up fast, because, well, they're going to get to put down another seven infantry this turn, um, the, the Russians, I mean. But after that, they're only making, um, they're only making six dollars. And so that'll be two infantry per turn after that. And well, I mean, geez, that's, uh, that's not gonna be enough to wanna start anything that you, that you can't finish, that's for sure. But then other than that, the encirclement just kind of continues. Germany has most of the, uh, most of the IPCs that Russia has to offer. And uh, this turn will take Romania. I, it's not looking like they're gonna want to accept the, uh, the surrender just because of how much of an advantage they have. And they kind of want that, the Germans think that they can probably take Romania, and that's that's three dollars per turn. Um, it won't be long before they get Moscow, and then that's six. And after Moscow falls, they can have the rest of it, um, and then that's just money going into Germany's pocket. As for the rest of Germany, things are looking interesting. The navies are really starting to mass there. It's probably going to be next turn that they finally finally uh, pull the trigger on it, but the large infantry stack is sitting in Burgundy. Everyone else is sitting in Picardy. So we'll see if Picardy ends up slamming into um, uh, into Belgium, but of course the Germans get to go first and so we'll see what happens there. Maybe they'll try to pull their lines back one more time just so that they can really, uh, really pick the battle that they want, deal the decisive blow, and well, push on to Paris. Um, otherwise, it's looking about the same as it always has. Austrians are doing all right, making, well, a very healthy amount. British are making a good amount. Germans making a good amount. France are making a good amount. Everyone's making a good amount except for pretty much Italy, the Ottomans, and the Russians. I realize I haven't, I don't know if I've shown this, uh, this to you yet, but here is the chart. Italy not doing so good at 12. Ottomans doing all right at, at 16, but three of those IPCs are, are tied up in Mesopotamia. Um, the Russians not doing so good. The French, well, doing pretty decent actually there. I think they start with $24 per turn and well, they're at a net four right now. So that's pretty good. Austrians really good, way up, way higher than average. The British are a little higher than average, but I mean, hey, they're supposed to be kind of a player, and the Germans, they have to, they have to be the top player. Otherwise, <laughs> well, if the Germans aren't a top player in the game, I'm not sure that Germany's faction is going to win. But hey, it's turn five, and I think this game has a lot of life left in it still. So I'm excited to keep playing, and I'll catch you in the next one. Another turn down, and the situation for the Entente isn't quite looking as strong as it once was. Here in, in, uh, in Rome, it's, uh, it's looking quite precarious. The Americans had to come and assist the Romans in the defense of Rome, uh, since there was only about three of them left after the Austrian first assault had taken place. There are more Austrians on the way, but they're a little, uh, they're a little stretched right now. They're kind of playing a little bit of catch up and hopefully the Americans will be able to land some more, maybe even defeat this army before the next army arrives. But we shall see what happens there. Otherwise, Italy is not doing too good and America is uh, had a really strong first punch, now has to rebuild for a second subsequent punch. Um, but a few guys over there, a few transports, so they'll be on the move rather quickly. Otherwise, Africa is the same, of course. The Ottomans were unable to unearth the British from Transjordan in quite a stroke of luck for the Brits. I think they, I think they only uh, suffered two casualties. Um, but then, of course, they only dealt three in return. So the armies are still large on both sides. 
The British backed completely off in Mesopotamia because, well, what's the point of, uh, what's the point of kind of leaving that? Now they've got the tanks ready to roll and hopefully they should have just enough to, well, maybe take it, at least put a really big dent in, uh, in the forces there because the Germans are up here, don't want them kind of coming back on the lines. Um, really funny here in Romania, they didn't get a single hit. And then the Russians got one on them. So Romania is still contested, not looking so good. Uh, that's <laughs> pretty funny, no hits. It was all fives and sixes. Um, here's the last German army that will be heading up. And in Moscow, there is a total of Let's see, that's seven units. So seven hits and that's all she wrote for, for the Russians. They're only making six bucks a turn now. We'll see what happens. But the Germans don't have successes on all fronts. Their ships have been taken out. The French went in first, softened them up a bit. The British waltzed on in and didn't take a single casualty. So that is actually the final central power ship on the board because the Americans wrapped up the uh, the Austrian Navy, so there are no central power ships on the board. Not that it matters too terribly much. The Germans are, they're, they're, they're coming back. They're trying to reduce the distance of their supply lines, get the armies kind of massed into one or two territories, and they did a really good job. There's over 20 in the Ruhr, 20 infantry I mean in the Ruhr, as well as uh, 11 in Alsace, and then between the two, there's nearly 15 in, uh, artillery, as well as the three tanks, of course, that you can see. So it's pretty likely that what they'll do is they'll, they won't split their forces, and now they're gonna move as one. The Entente didn't exactly fall for their trap. Um, they didn't, they split their forces in a way that's, that's uh, not quite advantageous for them, but at the same point, it, uh, it maintains the strength of both armies. Everybody that started in the British homeland is now in Belgium, and all of the French have pretty much tried to do their best to get into, um, into Lorraine. So we'll see what happens here next time. The, <laughs> the French just try to keep pushing up, um, but they mostly have a defensive army. And at this moment, there really isn't a defense to play. Like, sure, the Germans are backing up, but, well, <laughs> the Germans also get to pick the battle that, that they force on, 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 the, uh, on the Entente for defense, and it's looking like they're gonna pick the British, wipe out the British Expeditionary Army, and then probably turn south. But we'll see what happens. Maybe, uh, maybe the French will, will make them pay for it. Um, like I said, it's a really fun game, and it's, and it's staying fun. Uh, sometimes this, this game can, can kind of start to show, show, a, show a victor earlier rather than later, but this is, uh, this is not one of those times. It was looking a little precarious earlier for the Central Powers. Russia was, dang, making $30, the Ottomans having no good time at all, and the Austrians not doing, not doing too well considering they got uh, completely wiped out on the Russian front and just uh, not having the luck they needed against the Italians, but things are really turning around, and I think it's extremely possible for a Central Powers victory. But hey, there's a lot of game left to play. Here, I'll, uh, I'll show you the um, uh, IPC chart here, since, I'm, since I've remembered it this time. And so yeah, Germans aren't looking quite as strong as, as they, uh, they have been, back down into the 40s. The British are looking really strong in the upper 30s, Austrians down a few into the lower 30s, France still strong, America at average, Ottomans doing good, the Russians, of course, not doing good, and the Italians not doing too well either, but hey, there's a lot of game left to play, and a lot of troops are starting to build up, so some decisive battles are going to have to be made here for a side to actually win. Perhaps I'll, I'll count up the money that the Entente is making and, and the money the Central Powers are making just to kind of see if the side has an advantage or not. But for right now, I'll leave you, and I'll see you in the next turn. Turn seven is over, and you might be wondering where the big armies are. Uh, don't worry, they didn't each kill themselves. I had to move them. 
There are so many troops that uh, I figured Norway can have them. That's a good battleground for them. Clearly, uh, Germany isn't looking quite as strong. They've got more artillery, more tanks, uh, less planes, and a few less infantry. The plane battle was pretty crazy. It was two defending Germans versus the three offensive French. No defensive hits, so the French have pretty much uncontested control of the skies over here. Um, but the Germans do have quite the counter that's uh, going to be ready to strike back. Maybe win, maybe not. We'll see. But there's nothing that the Brits can do to help help their allies. So at this point, it's just a matter of time before the uh, German economy crushes the French economy. No further attacks were made into Rome because of the Americans' defense, although uh, the Americans are probably going to have to leave this turn and maybe help crush the Ottomans, because as it stands right now, they're, uh, they're poised to take Transjordan and, well, take it commandingly. Um, but the British are pushing on Mesopotamia, so it's really kind of a toss-up about uh, what's going to happen. The problem is the Ottomans can just start taking all this uh, African IPC money. Um, but after that, well... Well, I mean, not even after that. Kind of before that, they might they might uh, start losing some more territory of their own. That's worth a, that's worth a little more a little more cash. We'll have to see what happens. The Brits take their turn first, and then the Ottomans. So the Ottomans will probably take Transjordan before before the Americans can come help. But we'll see what happens. Maybe the Americans just want to go straight for Constantinople. Not this turn, but maybe another turn. Still, the battle rages in Romania. Again, another another terrible situation for the Germans of very few hits on their end and more hits than they want on the defense. But Russia's still standing. Four units left. They're gonna, they're gonna put two more in there to make it six. The Germans have uh, three, four, five, six total units. They're probably not, not gonna win that. They might have to start pulling some Austrians just to seal the deal. Otherwise, the Germans have been putting everything into their conquest of France. And it's not going terribly, but uh, they're going to start losing quite a bit of money if they can't kind of start covering their losses or even have Austria start doing some of their some of their dirty work. But in any event, it's getting interesting because the Americans are, are starting to pull a few more resources into the continent. They've got a little contingent there building up an army over here that'll eventually traverse the waters. But hey, we'll see what happens. Switzerland has kind of become a battleground. Um, the battle lines for the Entente and the Central Powers are pretty solid. There's not a lot of gaps, not a lot of encircled territories. But the Americans are kind of thinking about employing a strategy of, well, maybe, I guess you could call it shock and awe, I'll just land wherever it's inconvenient for the Central Powers, take those territories, and then make them have to clean up the mess. But we'll see if that even comes into fruition. They might want to try to beat back the Austrians before their armies become too large. But in any event, turn 7 is over, and we'll see what happens in turn 8. Hey everyone, turn 8 has finished up, and... Well, let's go through a few things. So, Mesopotamia has fallen squarely into Entente hands, and there is a sizable force ready to back it up. The Ottomans do not really look too long for this world, uh, just based on the tanks rolling up, the artillery supported by, uh, by a plane, and the dark blue chips of infantry. Uh, but the situation is made all the worse by the Americans coming in, and closing their opportunity for breaking out. The Ottomans had to spend this turn defeating the lone infantry in Transjordan, which they of course did, but then the Americans got to go, and so they plugged that hole. And now the Ottomans look like they're, uh, well, they're gonna be making less and less money every turn. We can just put it that way. As for kind of staying over here, <laughs> the Germans and Russians did not touch each other this turn. Um, it's getting interesting right there, getting really interesting. And Moscow still hasn't fallen. There are three troops on the Russian side and four on the German side. 
Not sure what's gonna happen, but the Austrians are here to help. They're coming in with 10 guys, and I think any way you shake that out, it's gonna be a central power victory over the Russians. And furthermore, the Austrians did not attack Rome this turn, but instead opted to play some defense. So the Americans decided they would play some offense and they, uh, they cut pretty deep into the artillery. They took the rest of the uh, Ottoman infantry off and then took about, well, a little less than half the artillery off. So there's not a huge, uh, huge stack there anymore. There still is on, um, there still is coming up the back. But uh, one of the nice things that also just happened for, for the, uh, the Entente was the Austrians saw the French threat thrusting into either southern Germany or into Tyrolia or, well, anywhere really. It was it's, uh, quite a good position to hold in Switzerland, and so they had to divert an entire army to deal with the French in Switzerland. So the, uh, the stream of Ottomans has lessened for now, but of course they're still on the move and the French are once again going to likely have to take take a few steps back. Um, Belgium is not not empty, no, not necessarily. There's a lone Frenchman there. After the French assault last turn, which was mildly successful, the Germans brought in some reinforcements and uh, did quite well. They rolled extremely well with their artillery reducing the French down just to a few artillery in their planes and one infantry. So they retreated everybody but the infantry out to buy them a little more time. And well, now, they, uh, now they've now really stirred the pot there. The Germans have what they've wanted this entire game, which is a potent army uh, in one territory rather than a broken up army in two or three territories. And so now I think what Germany's going to do is either just head straight for Paris or pick off the armies that it can uh, every turn or so, just kind of using its numbers to throw and win by the weight, uh, the weight of that. So it's looking like it might be a central powers victory, but it's not over yet. With the Ottomans pretty much being defeated at this point, um, there's still the battleground in Italy, of course. That'll that'll be a big deal. Um, depending on how long Moscow falls, will of, will of course be a big deal. But the Americans, they're getting ready to roll across the waters again, and this time they're likely going to have to come help France. And then, well, kind of like I was saying, the Ottomans have fallen. The Brits can now focus fire on uh, on the Germans here in France, and maybe all that will be enough. Maybe not, because well. The Italians will still need some help. They're making single digits while the, um, here, I'll just bring you on over real quick <clears throat> and kind of show you what the, uh, what the money situation is like. Yep, the Italians still not doing so good with the uh, contested territories. They're uh, making single digits. The Russians with contested territories are making single digits. Uh, the Ottomans, not looking great. Um, of course, not nearly as good as the British. And when the British put all their money into um, into India, well, just makes it worse. Uh, then you got the Americans, well, they're gonna do about that every game, and no more, no less. French looking healthy, Ottomans, or sorry, Austrians looking really nice, uh, and the French and, or sorry, uh, the British and the Germans, of course, topping the boards like they always do. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this has been turn eight, so I'll see ya in turn nine. Turn nine has elapsed and, well, as you can see here, the Ottoman Empire probably won't even last to turn 10. What happened here was the British took all their guys from Mesopotamia and slammed it into Ankara and had some pretty, uh, pretty good dice on their side, left the Ottomans with two infantry. The Ottomans then kind of decided that well, if we're going to make a stand, let's stand at Constantinople. And so backed off everybody but one guy, just so that uh, it would perhaps delay a little bit longer. Although, as you can see, um, <laughs> the Brits called in a, a favor. And so 
the Americans who were defending Egypt hopped onto the, those same transports, headed up to Sea Zone 20, and, well, took it. So now the, now the Brits are going to be able to continue the press onto Constantinople, maybe taking it this next turn here, and if so, uh, conclusively stopping this theater of the, of, uh, of the war and ready to set their sights on Austria and Germany alone. But uh, this does kind of pose an interesting position for uh, the Austrians and the Germans as a whole, as they were trying to defeat Russia, and Russia still has not been defeated yet. It's extremely likely that Austria will take it this turn. But when they do, who knows? Maybe it'll just be liberated in five turns or so. So uh, it is It is very, it's, it's one of the most interesting games I've, I've played in a long time. Um, What's really fun about about this game is no, as a, there have been no naval mine hits. These three transports, safe. These ships that uh, went into Austria, safe. Those guys, safe. At the beginning of the game, when Germany assaulted, safe. Crazy. The mines have done nothing to impact this game whatsoever. But uh, aside from that, quick tangent, uh, let's see. Here in Rome, Things are not necessarily looking worse. Sides are just kind of building up, massing forces. There is no more American reinforcements for the time being. Um, but when the Ottoman Empire falls, perhaps the Americans will be able to turn some of their uh, some of their forces that way. Um, otherwise, it's not looking like the Austrians will be able to take it anytime soon, just because the French are starting to put a substantial amount of pressure on them. They've gone and retaken Piedmont after they lost it this turn. Um, the Austrians also control Switzerland, but it's uh, it's quite the situation where the French the French just want to keep backing up as much as they can um, to avoid the German uh, the German stacks. I'll show you the German stacks up here in in the Nordic countries that I placed them in. Five tanks, two planes a bunch of artillery, and a little less infantry. So the infantry is what, is what they're lacking. Every time that they go into a battle, it just gets cut right through. Never gets cut all the way through, but it just gets cut down quite a bit. And then as you can see here on the back lines, a bunch more tanks, more planes, and lots more infantry coming up. So the Germans are looking good. If they can, if they can just kind of take the capitals that they need to win the game, they'll be all right. But if they can't take the capitals, well, they're about to start. Uh, they're about to start losing some allies here. And kind of the last bit of news of this turn, there's just quite the uh, transport shock going on here. Uh, you got the French; those are empty transports. They'll probably have to start moving those around a little bit, maybe to assist the Americans. Um, otherwise, the Americans and British have pretty much taken everybody from North America, stationed them in Ireland as a as a staging ground. And they plan to hit the continent this turn after the Germans have gone. So we'll see what happens there. It's kind of looking like the Americans aren't going to be the, the raiding force that they wanted to be, just causing problems uh, where they can. And now they kind of have to start facing, well, bigger problems, which is um, <laughs> the massive German army that is about to assault either Picardy or Lorraine. It's a horse apiece at this point. But the Brits have finally started building in London again. Hopefully it just wasn't too little too late. We'll have to see though when, uh, when I come back for turn 10. See you then. Turn 10 is over and that is one less central powers power <laughs> for the Entente to worry about. They actually uh, did not put up too terribly much of a fight for the Brits. Didn't even uh, they got three tanks here. They didn't even uh, didn't even score three hits. So the Brits still have their entire army. Uh, as you can also see, there were uh, pretty massive assaults all throughout the front line. Uh, there's only one uh, one homeland territory of the Ottomans that's uncontested, and that's Transjordan. So we'll have to see what's uh, what's next in store for the battle here. It's uh, pretty interesting considering Russia's still around, uh, hasn't fallen yet, 
And the Brits are still putting a substantial force here that is likely going to head up and push into Russia, or at the very least, head up through the Balkans and try to snake its way towards Austria before too long. But uh, yeah, as of this turn, the British have the most money to spend uh, next turn. Uh, they're still not earning the most. We'll just check this out first real quick. They're not earning the most. They're earning a lot, but not the most. Um, but with the uh, the Ottoman, I think it was 17 bucks they had in the bank, that is, uh, well, plenty enough to pad the pockets of the Brits. So <clears throat> it's, uh, it's looking pretty good for the British. The Germans aren't looking too bad. They have, let's see, let's just kind of skip over to there. They've got a substantial force, four planes, five tanks, lots of red chips underneath those artillery pieces there, and then a few infantry to kind of take some of the first hits. Paris has got some some tall stacks of just about everything, but the uh, the Germans are just about encircled their army. Um, the Brits made a landing first, had one guy survive, and the Americans made a second landing. All that remains are two armor and one infantry in Belgium, otherwise they've completely got her uh, surrounded. So, pretty good time for the Allies there. If they can hold on to Paris and keep doing these spoiling attacks that make it so that the um, the Germans can't feed their, their uh, strong army quickly enough, well, they might just be able to beat them back. And with the British pushing up from the south, um, I mean, well, Italy's not doing so good. Italy, Italy's just going to be holding on for the ride. But with the, uh, the southern British push, the push from the west by the French, and heck, maybe a northern push by the Americans at some point, um, hey, they might have this in the bag. And I thought this was going to be a clear-cut central power victory. Uh, well, clearly it's now drug on to, well, this is turn 10. And there is not really an end in sight. There's possible endings in sight, but as of right now, it's, it's still up in the air. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I got to say for the pivotal turn 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, yes, I shall leave you and see you in turn 11. Turn 11 is in the books, and, well, Moscow has, uh, has finally fallen. But, as you'll kind of see, it might be a little, uh, a little late. Too little too late, perhaps. The Ottomans have lost pretty much everything. They tried to even go into Egypt and take it, but they couldn't. And these British stacks are just going to waltz up behind them and finish them off, taking all of the Ottoman pieces completely off the board. And the Brits are going to be pushing up down, liberating some Russian territory, retaining the, the money for themselves, but uh, they'll give it back eventually. Uh, here we got a standoff between the, the British forces with no backup and the Austrian forces, who have, well, a little bit of backup, not, not enough, though. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. I, I'm not too sure who to even speculate on would be the victor. It's likely, uh, likely going to have to be a defender's, uh, defender's advantage sort of situation going on. Um, even though the British have the tanks, the Austrians have the numbers. Um, but hey, we'll see what happens. Their supply lines are a heck of a lot shorter than the Brits, and at least it's easier for them to, um, to get some troops around because everybody's kind of so close already. The Austrians had one really unfortunate thing happen to them, and that is one guy remained in Rome after the battle. The Italians put on another two dudes, but of course, far too little too late. Um, but, you know, I might as well talk about it while it's still in, while it's in frame anyway. The German army was completely destroyed. Uh, the counterattack really didn't even take off all that many guys. It took off quite a few, but um, the Germans had to make that attack last turn just because they were being attacked in the back and it just wasn't going to be, um, it wasn't going to be enough for them to, to survive because the Germans, let's see, okay, so... The French took back Picardy on their turn, thus completely encircling the Germans in Paris. But then the Americans and the British can just keep landing, and the Germans did not get nearly enough hits to unearth them from Belgium. And now it's just going to be a growing problem. 
the Brits are putting all of their money up here in the uh, in London these days because well the Ottomans are gone, but it's just not going to be uh, very conducive for the Germans who I'll show you real quick but since uh, since I'll mention it, but they're pretty much matching the British dollar for dollar at this point, so when the Brits are putting all their money into into Europe and you got the French right there and the Americans landing every now and again, it's just not going to be enough for the for the Germans to punch through, even even if they had uh, the tanks to absorb hits and save some money on offense. Um, although, I mean, I, I could see the argument being made that uh, Austria will be enough of a thorn in the side of France and, and Britain to keep the money split. It's just, uh, well, when you, when you kind of look at it like this, the Germans and the British are pretty evenly matched. And then the Austrians are pretty evenly matched with the Americans and French. I just think that there are probably more Entente pieces on the board as of right now, and they're in a bit better of a strategic position anyway. They're kind of able to run... Well, they're, they, they have complete command of the seas. There's not a single Central Powers uh, ship on the board, nor has there been one for most of the game. Um, so it's kind of up to the Entente to... Uh, to run the run the troops around, um, and I think their positioning is a little bit more strategic. Uh, but I'll play I'll play out another turn for sure. Having a lot of fun with this one, like I've been saying, pretty much every turn. Um, this is a, this is a pretty good game. So I'll do one more round, and hey, if the writing's on the wall, it's just uh, just going to be the way it is. But if if the central powers can get a little little more lucky here, then then hey, maybe we still got a game on our hands. I just think that. Um, that assault into Paris. Granted, it didn't quite go go towards the uh, the Germans as much as they wanted it to. Um, granted, they were hoping for a to be a little bit luckier. Um, at the same time, uh, it probably wasn't wasn't too many standard deviations away from uh, from from being unlucky for them. It just uh, it was just the attack they needed to make. Otherwise, they would have been they would have been out because they had Russia and to win the game. The Central Powers need two Entente capitals to be held, one of them being London or Paris. They got Moscow this turn. They'll probably get Rome this turn. Well, they're 100% going to get Rome this turn. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty easy. If they, uh, if they could have grabbed Paris, they would have won the game. But being on the defense for the rest of the game isn't, uh, isn't going to win them the game. And so that's why they kind of had to make that. It was, a, it was a dicey battle to begin with, I know, but... I just kind of am looking at the board here and thought the Germans needed to make the play now or or kind of spend the rest on the back foot. But hey, I'll uh, see you at the end of turn 12 and I don't know, we'll see what, uh, see what it looks like. Hey everyone, turn 12 is over and I think this game just bought itself another turn. So, got a lot of action that's gonna be shaping up here down in both, uh, well, mostly just around the Black Sea. Huge British army ready to push up, maybe heading for Moscow, we'll see. As well as the um, the army in Bulgaria, well, not sure what it's going to do. It doesn't want to play defense, but it might have to. Um, the Austrians might force that battle on them just to kind of just kind of see what happens. But uh, it's likely going to be another offenders, uh, offenders, uh advantage I think just because there are so many guys for Austria and I think they'll have the advantage but if they stayed on defense I'm not sure Britain would ever attack because unfortunately they really just aren't bringing any more guys in they're kind of going all in on the uh um on the on the Germans right now <laughs> the the Ottomans did manage to take Egypt although that won't last for too terribly long the the British have quite a stack there that's ready to help reinforce and re-attack. The, the Italians fell in Rome, and so the entire boot is now controlled by Austria. Quite a bit of money that'll be in their hands for, well, probably most of the rest of the game, because no one's really going to be coming to liberate them. Everyone is focused on the Germans, but maybe the Americans will take a second to, to uh, turn around. As for the battles in France, what really made me kind of decide to continue this game for at the very least one more turn, it's uh, it's the Austrians. They're the ones who are really uh, 
keeping the lifeblood of the Central Powers alive. So they have two massive armies, one in Piedmont and one in Lorraine. The massive army that was in Paris wasn't quite as massive as maybe the French had hoped, and they're currently in Burgundy after a counterattack. So what's happening there is the Austrians are probably going to fall in on that, try to defeat that in its entirety, and, well, if, if, they, if they do well, then the French have uh, not much anymore. Their army is mostly artillery, which isn't very good, considering it attacks the same on offense and defense, um, as well as it's a bit more of an, it's, it's a bit of an expensive, uh, more of an expensive unit than infantry, and France doesn't have that much money to begin with. They've got some tanks on the back line, some artillery to boost the artillery, or sorry, <laughs> a plane to boost the artillery, but if the Austrians break through that infantry and start taking off artillery, then that's just, uh, that's not looking so good for them. But they don't have that much in the way of, uh, of an army, and so I'm kind of getting the feeling that it's possible the Austrians will get just absolutely slaughtered in the, in a battle in, into Burgundy, so I think I think I'll come up with something else for them, because that's just that's just kind of throwing it away. But then, as for the the German line of supply, they they're just re uh, they're just getting more and more heavy resistance. Um, they'll be able to defeat that this turn, very likely, very, um, quite possibly for sure. Uh, and they have a lot of infantry and tanks coming up in the back. They'll probably need to start making some more planes and artillery. Um, but they really aren't investing anything in the defense of Russia. They're they're like, all right, let, you can have it. Because they want Paris right now. That's that's their main goal. But with the Americans and the and the British ready to land, the, the British just made it so that now they have six transports, um, which is 12 guys per turn coming over. Uh, we'll see what happens. We we will see what happens. Um but yeah, if they can if they can hold the defense and push the Germans back to their back to their uh their homeland, then then yeah, it'll probably be over. But hey, we'll see what happens. I do want to play another turn. So I'll catch you in turn 13. Alright, that was turn 13, and uh, well, in some interesting world events, Moscow was retaken by of all uh, of all armies, the Russians, um, and then promptly uh put back into German control. Uh, what happened was there was one defender in Moscow uh, for the Germans, and then the one Russian that was in uh, Tartarstan just decided, hey, let's see what happens. And so walked in, got a hit, and did not suffer uh, a hit on from the defense. So took it. Unfortunately, that means that the Russians collected $11 and then gave it right back to the Germans. But I think this was probably a pretty good move on the side of the Entente because, uh, sure, it gave the Germans $11, but it moved the German army into Moscow so that the army in Tartarstan would be able to counterattack and take the Germans off this side of the board completely. So that'll be upcoming this turn, or maybe the Germans will just retreat um, and get out of there before they can waltz in and just... Uh, leave Moscow open. We'll see what happens. But um, for armies that did retreat, the British uh, walked back from from Bulgaria into Constantinople because the armies are just getting to be too big from the Austrians. So this turn they actually started building some more in India. Uh, the, the British are making so much that they still have enough to fill six transports um, and put that every turn into, into London. But yeah, the the Austrians are really starting to come up. The Ottomans have been completely dealt with. The the Americans are actually the saving grace here. The British got all but one hit. Seems to be kind of a common theme in this game, uh, funny enough. But then the uh, Americans came in, got their hit on offense and miss on defense. So Egypt is back into British hands. Uh, thus, thus keeping the the Germans and the Brits neck and neck here. Uh, and then the Austrians, a surprising dark horse. Uh, well, they've just got a lot of French territory that um, will eventually fall back into the French hands and, and knock them down a few pegs. But yeah, they still are making quite a, quite a chunk of change. The Austrians are moving up from Rome. We'll see what happens in this, uh, this face-off. Uh, I've been keeping the... So here, here, 
here's what happened over here. These Entente pieces are in Picardy, and those German pieces are in Belgium. I don't think it's in the Germans' best interest to attack. Uh, they will they will lose quite handily, um, but nobody can really attack them because it's uh, it's so split up. The armies are from the three different Allied powers: the Americans, Brits, and the French. So none of them can attack independently, but they can defend fantastically. Otherwise, the Germans just continue to move their forces. Uh, five tanks will be hitting the lines in Belgium this turn, and so that'll be another boost for the Germans, negating a total of seven hits now on offense. Uh, that'll be pretty good. Uh, some, t some planes got built as to hopefully establish some more air supremacy, because right now the Entente have it. Um, but yeah, otherwise, otherwise the game is still way up in the air. I, I don't even know how to call it at this point, so I, gotta, I think I gotta keep playing. These forces will definitely aid in the efforts of uh, keeping um, the Ottomans under British rule for now. But, but hey, you never know what could happen. Uh, the dice have been really fickle. This turn was a, uh, for the most part, a defender's paradise. Um, aside from like the uh, the lone attack into into Moscow and the lone attack into Egypt, um, I think every battle pretty much had almost all defending hits. So. It was quite a defender's paradise this turn, uh, but we'll see if that holds. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you um, at the end of, can you see that very good? It's, that's kind of, kind of bad, bad angle, but I'll see you at the end of turn 14. Later everyone. Hey everyone, I think that's turn 15 now if I'm not mistaken. I'm really hammering through these turns right now. Uh, this, this game's been up a long time. Uh, I've just been kind of playing it as I can. The turns are going pretty quick now, since there's uh, a couple less countries to worry about. Uh, I'm only doing five out of the original eight countries, since there's no Ottomans, no Italians, and, um, well, there was no Russians, but they are back, and they are really in full force here. They haven't collected any money, because all this happened on the British turn, but uh, when they do collect money, it's uh, no small amount, $18. Um, it seems like there's a lot of le a lot of uh, a lot of the money has actually been kind of uh, been dispersed. I guess a little little better now. Um, the French are going up. The kind of everybody's kind of meeting in the middle. The French, the Americans, and the Russians all are going up, but the British, Germans, and Austrians are going down. So I'm not sure if that's kind of a a tell that the central powers are are losing their grip on the world, but. Um, I'm not too sure. We can look at the board, though, and kind of paint a better picture. So, yeah, the British, uh, they took up two transports to bring over two guys and take Finland and Karelia. The uh, British army took Moscow back. The Germans decided that it was, they, they would make their stand, make the British hurt for it, and they did. They got it, got some good hits on them. Uh, only, only the tank was only able to stop one of them. Uh, then the Austrians, well, they're probably going to slam and try to take back the Ottomans. They're going to slam right into the British army there in Constantinople. We'll see what happens. I imagine they're going to win quite handily. Uh, but hey, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, they've got some serious backline units ready to roll, but they kind of want those backline units to now start heading towards Moscow. The, uh, having the Russians back on the board is going to make it much more difficult for, um, for them to do it. We'll see if the uh, if the Germans are going to regret not forcing the revolution, and uh, so well, hopefully those IPCs paid off for them while they were collecting them, because now the Russians are back and they're collecting their own money. Otherwise, the Americans have finally done something they've been wanting to the whole game, and that is be a nuisance and just start raiding the coasts. So they took Trieste. Mine missed, of course it did. Mines haven't hit this entire game so far. I find that quite astonishing. But the $4 territory is well worth the, um, well worth the infantry, uh, considering that they can also make them kind of take a step in a direction they may not want it. Um, and by that I mean, instead of having these guys from Vienna head to Budapest and then to Romania, then to Bulgaria, um, now these guys have to come over here and go through Serbia without the opportunity to go up into Russia. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think losing the infantry, because, I mean, they've got tanks. Even if the infantry hits, it doesn't even matter. Uh, but, hey, $4 for a $3 unit, kind of a positive, I suppose, as well as a strategic positive, so that's nice. Um, in other news, 
Uh, there's going to be a, <laughs> quite a standoff here between the Austrians and the French. The French have liberated almost all of their home territory, just uh, missing Lorraine. Um, otherwise, yeah, we'll see if the if the Austrians want to, uh, well, if they want to attack. I think they just might. They've got quite a few offensive units, uh, so they just might make an attack. Try to uh, try to keep keep the advantage while the French armies are split up into effectively kind of three ar major armies in the vicinity. Uh, there's a good good army in Paris, but that's just the build. Um, there's some guys in Burgundy. That's probably the most potent one. And then the one in Marseille. They'll probably go for the one in Marseille because there's the fewest infantry and they can start hitting the, the artillery uh, sooner. So that should be a, that should be kind of a fun, fun get for the Austrians. Uh, they got to start making some more money because they're now down $10 from their height. Uh, they're down to the low 40s and it's only going to keep getting lower um, as the French kind of... Uh, Kind of press their their offensive advantage although hey maybe they're gonna maybe the austrians are gonna start making it up uh in russia and well maybe in the middle east a little bit too otherwise uh the situation in picardy and belgium grows worse for the germans every turn uh the the germans may be putting uh fifty dollars per turn uh, in whatever units they may um but the americans are putting 20 the british are putting uh, let's see, probably, probably 40. And then the French, of course, are doing what they can. So they're getting matched dollar for dollar. And that's a lot of infantry. The Americans have truly come in full force. Let me actually show you what's, what, uh, what is finally here. So there's five artillery in total. Nothing, I mean, nothing to scoff at considering air supremacy, if they can get that. But there is 23 American infantry alone. Um, so the Germans might want to try to slam into that before before the Americans get any ideas about going on the offensive. Didn't think the Americans would be able to build up so much, but hey, it's turn 15. Maybe I should have been expecting something by now. They really had just two major army groups this entire game. Otherwise, uh, otherwise they've been kind of token forces at best. Um, but yeah, so that's the situation there. I think the Germans might have to try to do their, their attack this turn um, and just kind of keep backfilling because the British keep coming the Americans keep coming. It's uh, it's not looking too good for them. And if this goes poorly, then uh, that might spell the end. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I just feel bad making them making them kind of attack like that. It's just kind of the nature of the game where you uh, you don't have too much of an opportunity. If um, as, sorry, as the central powers, you don't have much of an opportunity to play the waiting game. The IPCs are stacked against you. Germany is making the same as Britain right now. Well, they're making one dollar more, but hey, it's it's it's, it's one IPC. Um, so they're getting mashed by the British, and the Austrians are being surpassed by, if you count the Americans and French together. Um, but hey, now you got the Russians back on the board, and they're not making any any small amount. It's a pretty pretty decent scratch. So I don't know. I feel bad making them attack, but I think they kind of have to have to attack this turn otherwise otherwise they uh they just uh they just won't have the the horses to press on so i don't know i'll uh, i'll see what happens uh, i'll see what i'm feeling on the on the american turn or sorry on the, on the german turn um have the uh, austrians do their thing and if and if it feels like they if it feels like the germans have to make a move now or later and now is the only time they have then I shall make that attack. Otherwise, otherwise, hey, another turn for them. But yeah, maybe maybe turn sixteen will be the pivotal point, and uh, and the great war can truly uh, truly begin to end. So, all right, see you in seventeen. All right, that is turn sixteen, and <clears throat> the deadlock in Western Europe has been broken. There are no more contested territories between the German and the Entente powers, um, all, of the, uh, all of the Germans have unfortunately been, been dispatched and they really don't have much in the way of offensive units coming from the back lines. They've got six artillery in Holland and another seven in Berlin, but otherwise they just have, uh, well, uh, getting up there in numbers of infantry in Belgium is probably about 20. And then it just keeps on, um, 
and just keeps on growing. The armies from Austria have also been dispatched against France. Uh, France did pretty well against the Austrians and they didn't do quite well enough to them. And the Austrians are now gonna have to start splitting forces as well as the Germans. Some flaws in the strategies are beginning to form, but let's finish talking about this first. Constantinople held with one infantry and one fighter. So the Ottomans were not back on the board this turn, but they will be next turn. There's only one guy left, and surely he won't be able to put up enough of a defense. And then unfortunately for the British, the bad news just keeps coming, and there really just isn't enough in the way to, uh, to stop the, the Austrians here. They've got just too many horses. But now the British are starting to split their money a little bit better between India and London. They, and they definitely have uh, the money to do so. I'll show you the, the board here. Um, due to uh, the liberation of, of Russia, um, that took away some money from the British, as well as um, the Austrians taking money from the British. Uh, but mostly, Germany's bit, uh, really started to fall. Um, and so, in a crazy turn of events, Austria is now the most, uh, most rich player on the board. Um, but yeah, so Austria has its largest army here, ready to uh, retake its ally and get some more, some more pieces on the board that way. But the Russians will finally get to place some units this turn, and uh, no, in no small amount. I think it'll be five infantry. Um, and then it's only just going to get to be more and more as the British take more, as well as the uh, um, the uh, Russians starting to help help out uh, their ally once again. The Austrians have begun splitting forces in uh, two separate ways now. They've got to go deal with the Germ uh, sorry, not the Germans, uh, the Russians, because the Germans are they're they're focusing on on the defense over here. And maybe the Austrians can help over here, but they've also got to put some pressure on France. Otherwise, Germany's going to start out doing not so good, as well as keep the pressure on Italy and make sure that doesn't get liberated. But it's looking like it likely will. What I was mentioning earlier about the kind of breakdown of strategies is everyone... So, to my understanding, this game is kind of difficult because um, it's difficult for certain powers in certain ways. Uh, because you really have to go all in on something, otherwise it, it may not quite pan out for you. And so I really tried to employ the strategy of, all right, we got to go all in on this to win. And it's been working out. They went all in on Russia for a moment, it fell. Austria went all in on Italy, it fell. The British went all in on the Ottomans, they fell. Now, consequently, the Austrians are going all in on the Ottomans, and they're going to bring it back. But... Going all in means that you're really, really neglecting other areas. And so Italy is really not looking too good for, um, for being able to hold it in terms of uh, the Austrian defense. And the Germans, they don't have any planes. They don't have any tanks. In fact, all the pieces are in, are in frame right now. That's all the German pieces on the board. And it's, a, it's quite a few. They're putting down a lot, but it's probably not going to be enough. I think the Austrians are going to be the wild card in this game. If they can, geez, if they can recapture Russia, if they can uh, liberate the Ottomans, if they can hold Italy, they have just might uh, they, they just might have done something. Uh, but if they can't, then I don't think the Germans are going to be uh, able to do enough carrying for the team, considering they're outpaced now by uh, by the Brits. But hey, we'll see what happens. It's a good game so far, and I'm I'm definitely definitely enjoying this. Ready to ready to keep playing, and I'll see you in turn 17, everyone. Catch you later. It's a little hard to see, but that is turn 17 all wrapped up and done. Well, let's start over here with the Americans for probably the first time. I don't think I've done that yet. <laughs> the Americans are on the move as usual. What I'm trying to do here is stack them up on French transports so that the French can get them over towards Europe on the French turn, and then offload on the American turn, but they're just kind of playing a support role at this point because America doesn't want to keep investing in transports uh, when, well, already America probably has a few too many. Um, 
But yeah, well, that's what America's doing. Figured I'd start with them this time since I don't think I'd done that yet. No one is, is in Africa, still no one there. But of course, the Ottomans are back. They'll be placing their first, uh, first build in a few turns uh, this turn. The British are a little bit on the back foot here, kind of retreating to some strategic positions. Also staffing Transjordan as to hopefully not let them just start tearing through Africa. But they are really starting to put the pressure on here. That's, uh, that's probably 30 bucks right there in the last, uh, 30 bucks each turn for the last two turns going into here. Um, and really there's not much in the way of uh, the Austrians backing up what they already have, so I'm not too sure what's gonna happen there. Uh, the Austrians are getting pulled every which way since they're kind of the saviors of the Central Powers right now and they're almost out of steam. And uh, let's see here. Italy is starting to get taken back. A huge French force um, is down here, kind of in the middle. Uh, it can either punch to Switzerland, go up to Lorraine, or head down to Piedmont. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, the Central Powers go first, and so the French can play uh, the reactionary force there. Germans up here not attacking because they'll lose, but wanting to play some defense because, well, that's comfortable for them right now. The Americans and British... Uh, Combined are very mighty, but alone are not strong enough to, um, well, to quite warrant an assault. And that's just kind of going to be how it is for a little while. The Germans continually placing, and then the Americans and British continually reinforcing, but neither side wanting to make that first punch. Uh, but eventually someone will have to. Otherwise, um, well, I suppose the Central Powers have to make that punch, otherwise they won't win. Um, and why the reason they won't win is because Russia is uh, more and more becoming a power on the board. So, if we look down here, Germany and Austria are doing fantastic. Neither are above 50, though, so the days of, of uh, powers being comfortably uh, above 50 are, are long gone and likely won't come back. Um, Britain doing all right, France doing all right, America doing on par, but Russia is, is uh, re-emerging as a power. And, well, with already, with already uh, $17, um, it's looking like they're only just going to collect more and more. Um, Romania might go to the British, probably not though, since the Austrians go first. Um, Ukraine, Belarus, Poland, all well within the, the grasp of Russia. But with the Austrians and the Germans devoting forces to, to uh, come quell this, but also at the same time not enough forces to defeat it, because if they brought all the forces to, uh, needed to defeat the Russians, they, uh, they'd be sacrificing a lot in terms of the Western Front, including Italy, and the Southern Front to help out the Ottomans. So in my, in my opinion, this game is beginning to show that it is over for the Central Powers because they weren't able to achieve their victory soon enough um, kind of like I was mentioning in the last turn overview, uh, the cracks are beginning to show in the strategies, uh, employed by pretty much every nation, which was, um, <laughs> mass assault. Uh, but hey, we'll see what happens with the wild cards of the Russians. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens there. The Austrians are going to have quite the powerful force on the, um, coming up, uh, on the back end, uh. Yeah, the, Austri the Austrians are on the back end. They're coming up. Uh, the Russians might have some offensive capabilities, but not quite yet. They're going to hopefully play some defense. But maybe Italy will come back. And then that would really spell the end for the Central Powers, because that'll probably take away about $10 from, from Austria or so, knocking them down to the size of Britain, and then put Italy back on the board as a proper power. Italy just might be the one to, to win the day for everyone. Nah, who am I kidding? It's not going to be Italy. But it'll be somebody. So, see you in turn 18. Turn 18 is wrapped up, and I'm running out of sides on my 20-sided die. So, let's start over here in Western Europe. The fun part, anyway. France has taken back all of their uh, home territory. They just got Lorraine this turn from the Austrians. And uh, they also took Switzerland, because the Austrians had to really back off. There's just too many horses of the French that are <laughs> knocking on their door. Who knows, uh, the French are in a really nice position right now to swing either north or south, uh, either causing a lot of havoc for Germany 
or likely liberating Italy. Not too sure what is going to happen yet, but either way, I don't think the Central Powers will be on the offense trying to stop that army. Um, in other words, Germany is still continuing their death stack. Um, that kind of accumulated just this turn right now uh, before all the other allied powers have gone. And so the Entente just kind of kept walking around them and well, we'll see what happens. There's a fairly weak army in Lorraine right there. I think it's three infantry, a tank and an artillery. So maybe Germany will swing down and kind of push the envelope here. And um, maybe we'll see a, a threefold attack by the Entente, first the French, then the British, then the Americans to clean up. Um, hey, we'll see, we'll see what happens on the German turn. Uh, the Central Powers just really keep making plays that are backtracking. Uh, so I think this game is probably running out of life. Uh, but let's check the other sides of the uh, of, of the world real quick. The Ottoman Empire has a has a territory. <laughs> um, quite a heroic story by this one lone British infantry here in Ankara. That is, uh, let's see, four infantry, one tank, one artillery, uh, all walked into Ankara, and they all missed. So the British infantry survived and holds the line. Plenty of guys here in Transjordan. Uh, I think the guys up here in, in Smyrna have just a few extra guys, plus, I suppose, tanks, although um, I think what would really decide it would be an air battle. Both sides have one, one fighter, and the, the Austrians would really like to get that air supremacy because they've got a lot more artillery than do the British. But either way, I'm not, not too sure who would win that. It's close to a horse apiece. Um, but at the same time, it's not like, uh, kind of like I was saying, it's not like the, the central powers can keep waiting around. The British are pouring lots of money into here. Let's see, is there a dark blue chip here? Yes, there is. Dark blue chip in Mesopotamia, dark blue chip in Persia. Uh, although they did get a reprieve this turn and um, they would only placed three infantry in India because they wanted full transports for this next turn coming up. They weren't too sure what's going to happen. Um, in other news, Russia is still alive, looking pretty well. Germany is devoting a lot to come and take this. Austria is devoting a lot to come and take this. They will probably take it, um, if that's if that's my uh, my humble opinion, but... They're going to take it at a cost, and the cost is all of the other fronts that they are on. Um, but yeah, so this is turn 18. The Americans just continue to move troops. They have the largest Entente army, I think, in France. Maybe beating France, not too sure. Um, but they're doing pretty well for themselves. And for the scratch that everyone's making, Ottomans are at 8, Russians at 17, Americans at 21, French at a, at a pretty sizable 32, central powers of Germany and Austria in the mid 40s, and Britain just barely above them. So, I mean, hey, the numbers are going to speak for themselves eventually. But maybe the dice will do a little bit louder talking. So, this has been uh, turn 18. I'll catch you in turn 19. Hey everyone, turn 19 is over, and what an exciting turn that was. So, all right, let's 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 start here. It's really starting to look like the, uh, the Napoleonic Wars with all those French flags starting to sprawl across Europe. France is doing quite well for itself. They've defeated the, uh, well, a large chunk of the Austrian army here in Venice. Took five casualties, I believe it was. Not too bad. Um, and they're still, of course, helping out the American kind of sea lift effort, I suppose you could call it. In other news, the Americans have a massive force. They just keep, keep moving guys, and the British, they just keep moving guys as well. They've got 12 more guys ready to load up those six transports and hop on over. And unfortunately for the Germans, they are splitting their forces something fierce. They have two entire, uh builds going over towards Moscow because someone's got to go deal with it and the Austrians got close I'll bring you in here they got real close there's only there's only a few Brits left and then they were going to start taking off the uh, the Russians but they didn't get nearly as many as they needed to and so 
Now the Russians are just going to keep building. But the Austrians have some reinforcements in the way of some pretty good armies from themselves, as well as the massive German armies. So that's going to be really nice for them. Probably not enough to take it this turn. Maybe next turn, though. Maybe. We'll see. But over here, I think, is probably one of the more deciding factors of the, of the, the whole game. The Austrians came into Transjordan, didn't even defeat all the infantry, and then, uh, so I think they got, they got 11 hits, a pretty clean 11 hits, and then I just real quick rolled the 11 responses, and out of the 11 hits that they just dealt, they suffered eight. On, on a three or less, they suffered eight out of the 11 hits. Uh, so the Austrians took a real bad uh, blowback over here in Transjordan, and the British are able to reinforce that, and so it's not looking like their dreams for an Austrian-dominated Africa are going to quite be realized. And then, because they kind of split off their forces a little bit, the, the British were like, hey, if they're so weak down here, I don't need to have all these guys from Mesopotamia start moving over. I'm just going to start going for the start going for the jugular. And so they didn't, they, they, they didn't quite win, but hot dang, they dealt some damage, and Constantinople probably is going to fall super soon anyway, just because of of how little resistance can be formed next turn. So let's see. So the Brits are going to pull uh, eight guys from Mesopotamia into Ankara. And then what, when they do that, then the Ottomans are going to put down three more guys. It's just not looking good. I don't think the Ottomans are going to be staying around too long on the board. And then they'll be taken cleanly off. Also, the British just snuck in there. Good for them. <laughs> And then the uh, the Germans are starting to play a little bit of uh, of fire control. They've, instead of going the Kiel, Holland, Belgium route, they've now gone down to Hanover, and they're going to have to take back Munich themselves because nothing could reach uh, nothing could reach Munich to defend it this turn. And so that's why France just walked on in, free four bucks. Uh, I imagine France is going to swing down, liberate Italy, and come back just to kind of deal with that army and then be on their merry way, just have to focus here. Everything that's in frame would be all they have to focus on after that. Um, so I think this game is wrapping up just in time as well, because like I said, I'm running out of sides on my 20-sided die. Um, I'll do the 20th turn for sure, just, uh, just to kind of see what happens, and maybe the 21st turn. Uh, but I think uh, <laughs> this game has taken a lot longer than I wanted it to. Uh, that's for sure. I enjoyed it. It was, it was a lot of fun doing this game, and for a moment I thought the Central Powers had it cleanly in the bag, and uh, then, the, then the, uh, the Allies brought it back, and then I thought, oh, oh, is it tipping back in favor of the Central Powers? No, not quite enough. The, the Entente are really bringing it back. So here, let me show you what's, uh, what's the IPC value right now, and I think this is a pretty good tell about why the game is going to go the way that I'm kind of saying it is. Ottomans are making, sorry, um, the Ottomans are making just chump change. The Russians are on the board, Americans on the board, helping out a surprising amount, to be honest. But the French and the Austrians are now tied. And no, the Germans and the British are not tied. These guys are on separate rows. So the, the, uh, the British are, are nine ahead of the Germans. And when we've got deficits like that, I... Uh, not not too sure, not too sure about the Central Powers. Not too sure at all, but heck of a game. Both sides really hung in there. I didn't think I was gonna hang in there for a minute there, but uh, real fun. So I'll see you in turn 20, and I mean, hey, maybe something cool happened. Later. Hey everyone, round 20's all done, and it seems to be quite a telling round. In Transjordan, there's still quite a stalemate going on, although it's likely that the Austrians are going to uh, attack this next turn just to do something because, well, they're a little better on a uh, little better on offense anyway, just because uh, they've got those tanks and those tanks are going to do a little worse as well on, on defense as well as on offense. They they can take a couple hits for them. Um, the Ottomans are not looking too good. They got a nice little stack right there. They'll hold on for a turn, that's for sure. Um, but after that, they won't be collecting any more money because, well, their, their capital will be contested. 
In other news about capitals, the Russians have held on. They have two guys remaining after the German onslaught. So, of course, they won't get to make it to their next buy. But it still has really tied up the Central Powers forces. Germany's now beginning to, to, uh, to double back. But it's too little too late. Uh, the, the front lines have really opened up. And now Germany is protecting almost all of the territory that it has, uh, which has led to, um, well, quite honestly, the defeat of its most major army. I'll show you over here. So it's actually in Lorraine there, but all the pieces are up here. First, the British attacked. They they took quite the beating. They, they got cut clear through all their infantry and then, um, and then had to take some artillery off. But then the Americans came in right afterwards and just about finished them off and did the trick. They've just got a few artillery left and that lone infantry. Um, and then, of course, that's not, not even counting the guys who, who had to land on the coast and reinforce because Lorraine is inland. Um, so there's some massive uh, Allied armies uh, starting to close in on all sides. The French were just one infantry shy of actually taking Venice, but they have plenty to defeat Tuscany and move on to Rome in two turns, liberating that for, um, for the Italians and bringing their, uh, their, their buddy to the south back on. Um, and the, uh, the Austrians just kinda, kinda building up. They're gonna play some pretty heavy defense here very soon. So I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty much over. The, the IPC chart looks a little better for the Central Powers this turn. The Germans are, are winning again, and the Austrians have quite a lead on the Fran uh, sorry the, the French, um, but it's uh, it's really not looking too good for for the Central Powers on the board. They're just going to keep losing money, and they'll have less and less troops to put on every time. Especially considering uh, Austria is about to lose nearly probably probably about ten bucks right here from from Italy in the next two turns, and that's not going to be uh, it's not going to be so good for them at all. Um, and then the Americans continuing their, their transport movements. Um, but yeah, really, the, the ball is really in the, uh, Entente court here to kind of press their advantages where they have them. And who knows, it might be enough, but maybe with the fall of, uh, of Moscow again, it's, it'll, it'll free up enough troops to, I don't know, do something because more troops have been, uh, put in London rather than in India over here, so... Maybe there's a reprieve somewhere. Uh, the Central Powers just have to find it. Well, see you, in, uh, see you in round 21, everyone. Hey, everyone, there's round 21. And, well, this is kind of what I'm doing now to mark the turns. 20 seconds I ran into sides. And, uh, well, this was another telling turn, but in a bit of a different way. The Austrians did their assault, and, oh, boy, they, they won pretty good. The, uh, the Brits did almost nothing back to them. And the, the Austrians had a lot of, a lot of hits, so they, they're feeling pretty good about themselves. And Constantinople is not contested at all right now because the British are probably going to come down, defeat this, and then have to head back up. But as a consequence to that, the Austrians probably sealed the, uh, the death warrant for, for the Ottomans. The entire buy of the Brits went into India. But also... These armies that just took Moscow are now swinging down, so the British kind of have to do that, do this anyway. Uh, it's looking like the Ottoman Empire is going to be the next great battleground. Um, that is, of course, after maybe even another Battle of Moscow coming up. We'll see. Um, but also, the Germans are beginning to really lose a lot of uh, a lot of their home territory. The um, the French finished off the, the army in Lorraine, and so then that allowed the British to punch out, and then the Americans to move out subsequently as well, and then just keep on moving. So, yeah, it's looking looking pretty interesting. The Allies just keep taking stuff. The, uh, let's see, so the Austrians have retreated. Eh, it's kind of a, kind of an iffy idea here, but I figured I'd put the Austrian infantry, rather than in Rome, down here in Naples, because now either the um, the Entente would have to deal with one infantry into Rome and the rest into Naples just to hopefully win that fight. Um, I don't know. I'm just hoping to kind of make them make them uh, a turn or two late. 
Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what's happening there. The French defeated uh, the, the forces in Venice. Austria has a massive uh, army built up in Tyrolia. Um, and the Germans are, well, they're really taking on the chin these days. So, hey, I'll see what happens next turn. But if the Entente just continue to press forward, which it looks like they absolutely will, um, and I don't think the Germans can, can put up a stiff enough resistance besides just hole up in Berlin, um, then I think that's probably it. Probably it for the game. So, hey, I'll see you in a little bit. Round 22 is in the books, and, well, one power has re-emerged on the board. Italy is finally back, having actually almost all of its territories automatically flipped back to themselves, um, apart from Venice, which is still uh, contested right now. Uh, but yeah, Europe's looking looking pretty good for the, the Entente powers. The uh, Brits are starting to push pretty deep into Germany. Uh, the Germans held just barely on in Holland there with an infantry and artillery, uh, but the Americans clearly will clean that up next turn. Um, British have 12 guys in Belgium, 12 guys in London, and then they're just kind of snaking through. The French have a sizable army in Switzerland. They'll probably have to have to either kind of see what the, the Austrians do in Tyrolia or in Venice, uh, kind of see, see what comes of that. Transport movements are still going pretty strong for the uh, for the Americans. The British pulled just about everyone out of their of their uh, <laughs> excursion into northern Russia just because they felt that they'd be more needed over here rather than just die to the Austrians that are protecting Moscow. Uh, but the Brits are really showing up in full force here in the Middle East. The uh, sorry, the Germans and the Austrians are kind of doing a pincer maneuver. We'll see what they end up deciding on uh, for an attack. It'll be kind of difficult for either of them to really perform any attacks because they attack separately, and the British kind of outnumber each of them individually. But we'll uh, we'll have to just kind of see what happens. <clears throat> there, the Brits are also trying to reinforce over here against the the Austrians. If there's a chance, a small chance that the Austrians will end up taking the territory this turn, uh, it's not it's not a zero chance, but definitely a real chance for sure. And then the uh, the Ottomans are just consistently kind of trying to trying to keep their grasp on Constantinople as as the battles rage on around them. Um, quick landing into Albania that the Austrians are going to have to either deal with or leave alone for now. Uh, but yeah, that's the kind of it's kind of the whole situation of the events right now in the world. Germans are really on the back foot. Austrians are trying to put out as many fires as they can. So and, and so are the British. They're both just kind of playing spot defense. Um, and then here's the here's the current mashup of of dollars. British making a lot of money. Germans and Austrians making uh, well no small amount that's for sure. And then the French unfortunately had to give quite a bit of their money away this turn back to the Italians. But hey. The Italians are now back on the board, and well, they'll, they'll at least be be a, a defensive force at the very least, if not maybe picking opportunities to attack. But yeah, this game is coming close to wrapping up. I think uh, I think the Entente boot is really about to step on the neck of the Germans here. So hey, I'll catch you in the next round. All right, that's twenty three, and it's looking like the Entente are just about going to uh, going to seal their victory. This was the only place of reprieve for the uh, Central Powers. The British attacked, got zero hits, and, uh, well, the, the Austrians got one hit, so really no harm, no foul to either side. Would just been good for the Entente for positioning, really. The Ottomans still holding strong Constantinople, uh, pushing out a little bit, but only to grab a few dollars, nothing, nothing major. The British counterattacking the Germans to take some of the wind out of their sails, and well, they just have a big stack of artillery left, so I think the wind is uh, truly well and taken. Uh, the Austrians have a good good chunk guys here, good chunk guys on the back end, so you might think that, hey, they're, uh, they're looking pretty good to threaten the Middle East. But <laughs> the British did what they do best, and they naval invaded up in Corellia. Uh, the name of the game is one infantry remaining, and that is what they got. They, they, they hit pretty good, uh, but they still have one guy remaining. So now the Austrians have to double back again, uh, and that's just another another problem for them that's going to uh, make their defeat more and more inevitable. 
This French stack here is absolutely massive, probably more than uh, any stack that the Germans have and any loan stack that the Austrians have. Uh, the French just have their supply lines of just three territories, uh, Paris to Burgundy to Switzerland, and then they're in a pretty good, uh, pretty good place to, to poke out and touch just about, just about anybody they want. Um, the Austrians ready to threaten Rome again, but I mean, they'll, they probably win, maybe. Uh, but then it's going to take an entire army of theirs um, to go deal with that and maybe take it with a French counterattack. It's ex it's extremely possible that that would result in the destruction of another army of theirs, and I'm just not sure they want to do that. And then the Germans, uh, hey, name of the game, they left another dude, or well, they left a dude, an artillery, and a fighter of the British in in Munich right there. <clears throat> And uh, well, couldn't take it, so they're not gonna. So they, they weren't able to collect for that this turn. Or actually, no, sorry, the British. Uh, yeah, that, that's British control, isn't it? Yeah. So the British took that, um, and so the, the Germans aren't collecting that for collecting for that at all. Um, but then the Germans also took the Ruhr this turn because all the armies were tied up and couldn't uh, play any defense for there. So the British waltzed right in, took that, and they're really losing their industrial centers, like the Ruhr was their second most valuable territory just right after Berlin, and well, with it gone, and the Americans threatening uh, to, to either counterattack or go for Kiel, uh, the Germans are looking pretty rough, and that's just going to be highlighted by the IPC board. The British have a commanding lead, Austrians doing good, and they've done good most of the game, so good for them, uh, but the Germans are falling, and they are falling hard. They're only going to Come worse and worse as the as the British push further into Russia, they uh, will probably liberate it at some point, maybe depending on what the Austrians do in response. Uh, but otherwise, the Germans just have to play, uh, retake their homeland, and they didn't even want to play that game in the real war. They just gave up. So I get the feeling that next turn will be the final turn. Oh boy, twenty three turns in already, crazy game. Well, everyone, after 24 rounds, I think the game is over. I mean, there's quite a bit of life left in it, but it's, uh, in my opinion, a bit of a foregone conclusion. Well, to uh, wrap up this last turn here, the Austrians pushed into Persia, and uh, they dealt as much as they took. So they dealt three hits and uh, got hit back with three. So really, the Brits aren't, aren't feeling too bad about that one, even with... Uh, about half the force that the Austrians came in with. Then on the Brits turn, they defeated the entire German force in Afghanistan quite handily. So those guys are, or that large army is now freed up to uh, begin pushing against other central powered armies over here in the Middle East. Uh, the Ottomans and Austrians are getting a little more frisky now that, uh, now that the, the pressure is being applied more over here towards India, but, uh, the British can kind of just uh, can kind of wait and and let them do the pushing, and uh, they've really just been making infantry for for a while. In fact, uh, everybody's been making infantry for for the most part the entirety of the last few turns. And kind of my rationale with that was no one is really quite sure about when they're going to be on offense and when they're going to be on defense, and it's cheap enough. And in this game, an infantry attacks at a two, so. That's actually, it's not too bad a plan, but everyone was kind of getting a little weary about when their attacks would be, uh, would be coming and when they would be needing to be on the defense. But kind of transitioning over to Europe here, the Austrian army is completely encircled in Tuscany. Granted, they could totally punch out in any direction they so choose. Um, going for Rome would be their best choice, although that would be a really, really tough fight. It would, they wouldn't win in the first turn, and it's probably not likely that they'd win in the second or third even. Uh, so they probably would have to turn towards um, turn towards France. And I'm now realizing I didn't even put on a buy for Paris or for uh, for the French in Paris, but but uh, yeah, after the, after the French turn, I I, think I was uh, thinking this game was pretty much over. What the, uh, the Austrians did was for the Germans, they went to Munich to take out the lone infantry so that the Germans would be freed up. And so then the Germans were freed up and pushed into uh, Alsace. But then the French came right back at them and dug deep into their infantry, just about taking out all of their infantry and losing uh, actually next to nothing. So that was quite surprising for them. 
Um, and that was just kind of the final nail that I was like, all right, yeah, I think this game is pretty well over and the Entente has won. The Americans have left Holland and dropped down into the Ruhr after the Germans, <clears throat> after they uh, attacked the British there. And uh, there's only a man and an artillery left in the Ruhr. So the six bucks are tied up, but they are most definitely not German. There are plenty of Entente units, both American and British, on the back end over here. The British have completely dispatched the Austrians in Karelia, and so the, the Austrians did have to circle back a little bit to defend Moscow. It's just not looking good for them because all these guys are getting tied up and they kind of need them on the front lines to, to do, well, whatever. And the Americans just continue their transport chuck. So I think it's over. And just from one last look, the, uh, the IPC chart is the British clearly winning. Austrians not doing too bad. The Germans, well, not doing too good. The French doing better than they have any right to. And the Americans coming up pretty good with the, the Ottomans and Italians doing, doing all right. But at the end of the day, I think that just the, the amount of pieces on the board doesn't, uh, doesn't quite bode well with, their, with the uh, strategic positioning for, the, Ent or for the, uh, the Central Powers compared to the Entente Powers because that French stack is just going to keep growing and just move and try to slam into whatever, whatever semblance of defense the Germans can, uh, can put up. And so it just won't be enough. But it's been a really fun game. I think kind of all in all, the idea of trying to complete their objective before moving on to their next objective was good for everybody. Um, even even the uh, even over here in Russia, the Germans had made that call pretty early on that they weren't going to accept an armistice and uh, they didn't want to incite the the Russian Revolution. They wanted all the IPCs for themselves, and I think that actually um, did well for them. I'll I'll dare to say that that it prolonged the game in favor of them for a little while. Granted, if they would have done the Russian Revolution, the, Brit the British couldn't have landed up here in Karelia because uh, the Germans didn't hold it at that time, and thus it would have been, uh, it would have been neutral and, and the Entente wouldn't have been able to go into it. Same with uh, Tatarstan and Kazakhstan. Uh, the, the Central Powers didn't hold those at the time when the Revolution could have gone off, and then that would have blocked that avenue to getting to India thus kind of shortening the lines of the Entente to, uh, to attack them. But when you shorten those lines, then that means that these guys who didn't, who went up here would have just gone into Europe and started pushing. And the Germans would have had less money because they wouldn't have been collecting those four bucks every turn. They wouldn't be collecting for Moscow, Tatarstan, Kazakhstan. So I think it gave them some extra money in the long run and kept the Entente pieces spread around. But all in all, the Entente just had a bit of a better game, a little bit luckier in the key battles. and But like I said, it was pretty fun. I'm glad I was able to do this for y'all. Everyone who's still watching at this point, I don't know how long the video is going to be. So if you're still watching, thanks for sticking with. Uh, it's been pretty good. I look forward to doing the next one. If uh, you got any suggestions about which Axis and Allies to play next, I'm, I'm all ears. So uh, let me know what you'd like to see and I'll, I'll hope be able to get around doing that. Uh, but until next time, everyone, take care. Elite Golden out.